and welcome to this episode of Moses for the Masses. And today we are going to be comparing this Yamaha Tracer and this Yamaha Tracer. Which on paper are very similar, but in reality are quite different. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Crack. is a 2021 Yamaha Tracer 9GT. And on my right is the 2015 Yamaha MT-09 Tracer. So let's have a closer look at them. The 2015 model develops 114 horsepower and 64 and a half pounds foot of torque. Whereas the 2021 model develops 117 horsepower and 68 and a half pounds foot of torque. Both bikes have switchable traction controls and top out at around 145 miles per hour. Both bikes use 41mm upside down KYB front forks and KYB rear monoshock. The difference is, is that the 2021 bike uses semi-active suspension, meaning it has electronically controlled valves so the suspension can adapt to its environment quicker. The older Tracer also has 7mm more front travel and people have complained in the past that the older bike's suspension is too soft. Both bikes have 17 inch wheels front and back with their 120 front and 180 rear tyre. Both bikes use twin 298mm front discs with four piston Nissin calipers and a 245mm rear disc with single piston caliper. Here are the measurements of both bikes. So the 2021 model is slightly longer, slightly wider, and slightly taller. Now bearing in mind I am 5 foot 10 and a half with a 31 and a half inch inside leg. The 2015 bike has a seat height of between 845 and 860 millimeters. I am not flat footed on the floor, but I'm not far off. If I lean slightly to the left, I am flat footed. So that's not bad at all. However, the 2021 model has a seat height of between 810 and 825 millimetres. I am, now this is weird because this feels slightly taller because I am on tiptoes slightly. I wonder if that's on its lowest setting and this is on its highest setting, but even then this feels taller because I'm not flat footed at all and I have to lean a tiny bit more. So the on paper facts don't seem correct. This one is a little bit taller, the 2021 model, not the 2015 model. The 2015 bike weighs 207 kilos wet, whereas the 2021 bike weighs 220 kilos wet. The 2015 Tracer has an 18 litre fuel tank and the 2021 Tracer has an 18.9 litre fuel tank. So, to see how different these bikes ride, and if that price difference is justified, let's get them out on the road. Indeed. So here we go, initially on the 2015 bike. Give this one a go first, see what it's like, and then we will try the 2021 and see what the differences are. Initially, it's nice and comfy. The seat position, I am feeling as though I'm leaning forward slightly towards the tank. Let me, oh no, no, that's better. Gear change is nice and positive. Clutch is quite light. Nice torquey three cylinder engine. Very good brakes. Turns in quite nicely. Plenty of pickup. Very easy to get up to speed.
I have to say it is very blustery today as you may have heard on the previous part of the video so I do apologize if there's lots of wind noise this looks like an aftermarket screen to me not the standard screen on this particular bike so it's uh, sorting out any sort of buffeting quite nicely it's very simple um, I do like these hand guards they are um, keeping the wind off my hands quite nicely uh, a good distance apart on the handlebars um, nice feeting position my knees are sort of um, almost tucked in but they're nicely on the uh, pads of the tank mirrors are pretty decent um, I've got having said that I mean they're quite long so I've got decent visibility but I can still see probably 40% um, of it is covered by my arms the balance is nice sort of turns in quite nicely oh look at that look they've stolen the Ferrari font on the Freestones coaches <laughs> Now I'm in 6th gear but it feels as though it's revving higher, it's not because I'm only doing 3000 RPM but it um, feels as though it's revving higher, that's that triple sound for you. Really sharp brakes, pulls up very nicely, I say quite a light clutch, although the suspension does seem quite soft. And you do sort of um, dip when you pull the front brake on. I shall demonstrate here in a second. So as I pull up to these lights, I touch the front brake, look, dip, dip, dip. Rear brake doesn't do a huge amount, front brake still dips quite a lot. That is quite a dip on that front brake though. The clutch on this particular bike, you have to move out a while before you get anywhere. But... It picks the front wheel up very easily. I don't mean completely in a wheelie, but um, you can feel the torque is pulling that front end quite simply. So if you slow down with the engine braking it's not too bad, but just, as soon as you touch that front brake, dip, dip. It's quite an easy bike to ride though. Smooth enough gear change as I say. Easy to reach switch gears. quite blustery but I feel quite planted I mean it gets up to speed quite a lot I don't go a lot on this screen that is really slowing around there Well, that screen is very flexible there's a lot of screen there holding on to those four bolts and in the wind that really does flap around should go around here takes the corners very well Got some nice pickup. Very pleasant to ride that is. I certainly feel it's got um, plenty of go.
definitely got all the power you need and it doesn't feel very heavy to uh, move around it's not cumbersome in any way nice let's see what Patrick thinks in my opinion I kept jizzing buzzers in my feet back and bum it doesn't handle potholes or bumps very well so the comfiness I wouldn't like it be mindful because the speed is magnificent but when you when at a certain time you just stop instantly and it just goes boom so be careful passengers um of this bike that have it that will use it so the suspension isn't that good the speed is pretty good especially for a bike that weighs 207 kilos wet so it's fast for that weight um um as you see it going fast <laughs> was to only pick a negative it would have to be the way the suspension dips on the brakes now you've got um, preload adjustable on here and um, I don't think it's fully adjustable like the 2021 bike is um, and I'm keen to see the difference that semi-active suspension makes but um, it's, uh, I mean, it's a nice bike to ride, don't be wrong, it's very nice to ride, it's very simple. I would change this personally, I'm not a fan of this massive screen. That's just a bit too much for me. Um, I don't like the way it flaps around in the wind. Um, but it brakes nicely, it's a decent feeting position, it's comfortable, it's quite flickable, it's light enough. Um, mirrors are alright, I mean they're long enough to see enough. Um, you just see lots of arm um, and there's Patrick look with his new helmet on that's easy to keep at speed I'm in uh, third gear at 30 miles an hour here and it feels fine it'll go if I want it to let's put it in 6th um, or 30 and see what it does Six at 30. It's almost ticking along at 30. But it'll pick up. Well, not too much vibration in sixth gear. So you could sit at 60, uh, sorry, at 30 in sixth gear, no problems at all. Very pleasurable. And off we go on the 2021 bike. And I have to say, initially, it feels tighter. The suspension instantly is tighter. The gear change is tighter. The clutch is very, very light on this bike. I know it's only done three and a half thousand miles, but it's very light. Um, everything just feels newer and tighter, which you would expect, I guess, for a bike that's six years newer. But the seat is snugger. It's not as forgiving, I will say that. It's not as soft, but it's not horrendous.
takes corners just as well as the other bike although it feels better due to the suspension not being as soft pickup is uh, equally as good if not slightly better as you'd expect mirrors are all right same as the other ones really long enough to see but i've still got about um 40 percent of arm well actually maybe got a little bit longer or a little bit more about 50 percent arm simply because these stalks are not as long as the stalks on the old one what is better is this dash layout i like this twin pod dash that's nice that um the flash it's not what you expect it to be, It's uh, that's the mode button on here whereas it's usually a flash on a lot of bikes other than that everything feels pretty familiar um, as I say I do feel snugger in the seat so it's not as big the seat, the seat is a little bit smaller uh, this one has got heated grips I believe, the same as the other one um, I don't know if that turns that heated grips on or not hard to tell um, this button turned the heated grips on on the 2015 bike oh, I got heated grips on this I think so it's a fly-by-wire throttle um, it's important to mention that there's different ride modes um, between uh, the two bikes this one's got uh, various programmable modes whether you want traction control, um, what level of traction control do you want the other one you can turn traction control on or off and you've got three different ride modes, so you've got um, A, B and um, standard this one they've changed the way it uh, states so you've got, in look in the mode here, you've got D mode 3, uh, traction control mode 2, um, sub mode A1 um, and then when you switch the mode goes to A1 D mode 3 traction commode 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 <laughs> yeah, in case you shit yourself whilst riding because it's uh, scary no it's not scary at all um, and uh, traction commo commode I keep saying that <laughs> perhaps it's my age perhaps it's on my mind traction control that's what I mean to say system mode not traction commode although I think it should be called that from now on traction commode um, yeah so they all mean various different things um, I'm just gonna leave it in the standard one wherever that is um, I shall put up along the side here uh, the differences in the modes in comparison to the 2015 model and what they mean Now, as I'm not riding these bikes uh, fast or um, leaning it over as much as I can in corners, I'm riding it pretty normally. I'm not too concerned about seeing what all the modes do at the moment because these bikes have been out a while and they've been reviewed several times. Um, the point of this is as a um, touring bike for two people really, as we're using it, how does the newer model compare to the older model in terms of rideability and whether it's worth almost twice the price let's be honest I will say there's not a ginormous difference um, in the way the bike feels initially other than the seat is snugger the suspension is firmer uh, and the switch gears and everything feels newer in terms of usability uh, and but there's six years extra worth of use on the 2015 model than there is on this one as this one or let's say 16,000 miles more worth I 
will say I prefer the way this bike picks up. It does pick up nicer and sharper and it doesn't feel as wallowy. The other one when you change gear because of the suspension it dips a little bit and wallows a little bit whereas this one doesn't it feels very tight so the gear change is much nicer and the acceleration is much sharper so in terms of riding this really does ride a lot nicer again don't get me wrong the 2015 rides nicely but this one is just so much better very very light clutch is aggressive and aggressive in a way that's so much fun but you feel so much more confident on this bike yeah I have to say I love the auto blipper as well that it's got as you um, change down a gear oh you do ride this one so much more confidently than the 2015 bike feels better in practically every way you have to be on it and take the corners well to know how better it rides when you just pull away and you potter along it doesn't feel initially a huge amount of difference until it matters and then there is a big difference I see why this is a lot more money now not only does it feel newer it just feels better you still got the hand guards on this which work quite nicely um, switch gears are very similar to the other one but you've got a menu on here let's see what that does um, okay so you can change your settings well, I do like that auto blipper and let's have a look so push the menu in so I can change the trip um, what can you change on that no idea but anyway that um, and then you can oh, okay we've got so the menu actually only comes up when the bike is stationary uh, vehicle settings manual traction control setting maintenance whether you want it in miles or kilometers clock brightness um, the sus or sensor calibration uh, reset it all so yeah that's quite a nice little menu as I say for safety reasons it only comes up once you've actually become stationary You've got cruise control on here as well, which I quite like, very nice. Um, as I say, the um, headlights and then the flash is here, and that's your mode button where it would usually be the flash on a lot of bikes. Right. Yeah, gear change tight. Rides very, very nicely. I really do prefer this a lot and the screen doesn't flap around it's not quite as big as the other one but I don't think it needs to be because I didn't get any buffeting from this screen either and um, it's not uh, flopping around all over the place you still got the adjustments here if you want to up and down um, you just pinch that in and lift it up if you want to um, I don't need to I don't think let's have a look yeah so now it's pretty much as high as the other one and then pinch it in and push it down wherever you want it. I can feel the difference in wind buffeting slightly and wind noise even when I do it yeah even when I do it at this low speed wow brilliant let's leave it up there then so overall a much much nicer much tighter much sharper much better braking um, the brakes are just as good but you don't die forward when you slam on the front brake you do still dive obviously because it's a front brake but nowhere near as much as the other one because that active suspension does its job properly very good right let's uh, switch over and see what Patrick has to say about it shall we I like this bike, um, the 2011 one, 
2021, not 2011, 2021 bike more than the 2015 bike. You don't get as much bars on here, toes, and you don't get any bars on the back. So it's no way near, not as much, nowhere near as much buzz as the last bike. I would say I like the Comfortless more. It's more um, padded, squishy, what's, the, what's it the name? Comfy. It, it's more aggressive when it pulls out. So like it goes quickly forwards and pulls away quicker than the last bike. Um, I would say this is quicker than the last bike and I like this bike more than the other bike. this bike the speed is tremendous I would say um, I don't know about you but my opinion so I do like the twin dash on the front I, I think it's more modern um, nicer cooler as I said, it, it does have a little bit of buzz, but I hardly ever notice it. Oh, that's nice. So, now we're back, and whilst our lunch is cooking, Let's sum up on these bikes. Um, first of all, um, as I, say, I didn't want to go through all the features these bikes have, uh, all the different modes and what they do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, these bikes have been out a while, so you can look all that yourself. The idea of this video was to see whether it's worth spending almost twice as much on a six-year newer version of the same bike. So, first of all, let's start with the older one, the 2015 one, the first one we went on. What do you think about that? Is that grey or something? <laughs> yes, that's great. Yes. So what do you think about this one? Uh, I like it. Is that it? That's, that's what I have to say. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, um, I think you said on there that um, you got a lot of buzzing on the back seat, didn't you? As a passenger. So, the suspension for me felt a bit soft, a bit too soft. And um, it didn't put me off because uh, you adjust the way bikes ride. And the bike itself, for the price it is, rides really nicely i do like it a lot it's powerful enough um it's nimble enough it's light enough um the brakes are good brakes are very sharp um it's just that suspension to be honest if i was to have this bike i'd probably upgrade the suspension a little bit um other than that a lovely bike to ride however when we get on the 2021 bike it's like a whole different thing what did you think about that one i really like it and that's all i have to say Right, okay. You're in a funny mood right now, aren't you? You're hungry, aren't you? I know you are. Get anyway. Done. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> I probably think of the same thing. Stop waffling, carry on. So, I really like this a lot. It just feels tighter, sharper, the brakes are better. I really like this. It's just nicer in every way. The brakes are sharper, it feels tighter. It's smoother in the gear change. It's got the quick shifter as well. It just rides so much nicely. I love the way this rides. I love the way it feels. It's so much nicer than that. The big question is, would I spend twice as much money on that as I would on that? What would you do? That one's 5,600 and something pound. That one's 10,600 and something pound. So whatever you said about these bikes, I agree, because I can't be able to say that stuff. Okay, but if bearing in mind it's a lot of money do you think it's worth spending twice as much money on that style of bike than you would over that one yes why because i just do okay we're not going to get a sensible answer and also this it one. feels nice okay <laughs> and it feels nicer and yes. it looks cooler and yes. it goes faster and everything better than that 
only a little bit faster. No, speed wise, there's faster. not a lot. No, speed wise, there's not a lot of difference. It just feels differently. This one feels rapid, but sharper. And that one just feels a bit more wallowy. It pulls away, it pulls away quicker. Away. I think it's, the gear change is quicker on that, and the gear change is um, shorter. And it's more aggressive. It is more aggressive, yes, and that's much nicer. For me, and I'll explain why, I would definitely spend the extra money on that. Not because I think it's worth twice as much as that, but for one very specific reason. I would keep that a lot longer than I would that. That I think I would get fed up with, and a bit bored with, and slightly annoyed with after a while. Oh, that's nice. Okay, never mind that now. Honda 750, no, that was never, nice, that was. Never mind that now. We're not talking about that, we're talking about these bikes. Okay, so... <laughs> when we eventually get to a video about that bike, we'll do that bike, but we're not on that All one. right, okay, let me carry on then. <laughs> this one, I like, and I would keep it for a short while, I think, and I think I'd get fed up with it and annoyed with it after a while. It's worth it if you want a bike that you don't use very often, um, and you're not necessarily going to keep it for a long period of time. That one, if you're gonna keep it for a lot longer, is well worth spending the extra money on. And I think that is the important bit. If you're willing to keep a bike for longer and you're not gonna get bored with it and change it, definitely go for it. Although I haven't said that, I think the resale value on that is probably higher as well. It's hard to tell. Now, if you are interested in both these bikes, they are on the website at Superbike Warehouse. Pop along, links in the description below. Have a look or pop down to Superbike Warehouse and have a look at both bikes, perhaps take them out for a test drive. I don't know what your situation is or what their situation is, but it's worth an ask and also comment down below if you have like one bike um say what you like about it what you don't like about it if you like the bike and also if you have both you could say which one you like more and the things that you like about it excellent exactly if you've had this one and you're now on this one whether you think it was worth spending that extra and what you think about them in general and that i think brings us to the end of this episode it's time for lunch thank god so until next time Please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye bye. You got it right, well done. Yeah, I did it with a late reaction though. Doesn't matter. It kind of does. Do not do it again? No. Okay. And you also can't say bye until you've finished it. Really? A van wheel spinning with a trailer? Yes. All right, let's get lunch. Okay, fine. Cheerio.